السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله ما شاء الله so today we are once again here with our uh, podcast I think this may be our third or fourth podcast now الحمد لله and, uh, and uh, this time our main man behind the podcast uh, Sabit is actually behind the scenes so he's not actually in the podcast but so he's there with us behind the scenes so ما شاء الله he's doing all that <coughs> making sure everything is there so mashallah we have a guest now from now on inshallah we'll try to bring in different different guests and different different topics and uh, today our topic is mainly community issues and uh, especially drugs and uh, uh, other um, uh, type of substances that is getting quite common in our community and which is a bit over the top so mashallah we have our brother Ibrahim with us from uh, the Moving Ahead team who are doing a lot of good work in our community uh, along these lines. So, how are you today, Brother Ibrahim? Alhamdulillah, I'm good. Thank you. So, this is the first podcast. The first podcast. Um, I always thought that how, how will I ever get into this podcast. Too. How do you feel? I'm, I'm, fi- I'm trying to get used to it. <laughs> Let's see. Mashallah. You know, it's worth it. So, Brother Ibrahim, Mashallah. Um, uh, can you just enlighten us a little bit about this moving ahead team? Like, mashallah, we can see it's a good work they have been doing for the last few years, mashallah. It's not been very long, but mashallah, I have seen a lot of good work in terms of youngsters, sport activities, this drug counseling and all this, mashallah. Yeah, um, moving ahead um, is just something that came about with a few brothers here in the locality I'm concerned. And over the years, maybe, you know, five, six years, discussing it within ourselves at the Namazas or when we're in a social gathering, you know, the concerns that we have. And then uh, one day, uh, Brother Sajid Daya, he came up with uh, we need to do a local meeting or something like that within our local Mashallah. So we, we invited, you know, on, on the social platform, brothers from locality to come join us from every professional. And uh, so they joined us with a concern, a voice the concern, what, what needs to be done and everything. So thereabouts, we just decided that let's uh, team up with the local uh, brothers who are concerned. We had a few meetings, uh, you know, going ahead. Uh, you know, how can we involve professionals and plus volunteers from local and, and do something for the youth uh, in many different aspects of uh, activities to drug, <coughs> drug awareness, uh, uh, well-being, mental health. And uh, uh, it's just basically bringing local professionals together uh, and to working tackle the to tackle the issues yeah. long term, short term, and, and, and seeing how can we deter our youngsters from getting into the wrong drugs things. or the wrong things or not what's forbidden in our religion. So, you know, this is uh, really amazing, you know. Um, uh, as communities, we see a lot of different things going on around us. You know, like like we are based in Bali Town Centre. You just go for a little walk, especially at night. For example, now, maybe even later on, even one two o'clock in the morning, you go around Tesco car park, you go around uh, some of the gem places, around commercial street. You will see youngsters there hanging around, so sometimes up to no good, you know. So, mashallah, it's very, very, uh, mashallah, um, uh, very great to hear the work that mashallah, you know. The whole purpose, like Mother Ibrahim mentioned, of this moving ahead is to get everybody together. So how can we use our skills and different ideas and different things to, you know, get our youngsters, you know, occupied in useful things, in good things, and take them away from this kind of thing. So, mashallah, <coughs> but, uh, so, so far, what activities have you been doing um, in the last... Um, it's, it's been around uh, maybe a bit more than 18 months, just under two years. Oh, Obviously, we're trying to use uh, local facilities uh, that were already that we have, or the masajids, who might be just talks or youth. Uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen uh, some of the programs on addiction and things like this. Yeah. That's something, mashallah, really good. Because the main maqsid for us is, is that um, for them to connect to the masjid and, and our creator as well. Mashallah. You know, that's the main maqsid. Mm-hmm. And, well, and upskilling the <coughs> ulamas, uh, <laughs> definitely, you know, to how to tackle these modern day uh, issues that what we have and um, basically so uh, working with IMWS using the sports centre there 
even sometimes uh, normal uh, uh, order what they have there. Uh, we do also have like a ladies team, okay. yeah, which are Afaz that are going to run mm -hmm. uh, independently through the Mashwira of um, young Ulemas and old Ulemas. So we've been doing some activities with uh, Spark Skills. Uh, which uh, Brother Umar Rafiq has mm. uh, plenty of okay. experience in youth work um, for the past 30 odd years. Mm. So, um, using his expertise, uh, there's been a lot of activities been going around okay. uh, you know, in the sports, set, uh, multi sports. Recently, we've just set it up uh, with a local brother to um, Taekwondo, to taekwondo uh, sessions. Uh, taekwondo uh, sessions, uh, you know, and then um, it might be just uh, basically archery. So how is that taekwondo session going? Uh, taekwondo is a slow start has been because we've approached the smaller uh, matrix. Okay. Yeah, so then um, now... So you haven't gone all out on it? We're not going all out on it. It's just a tester that we're putting to it, working with the local uh, brother that who's running the taekwondo session with his family. Okay. So we've got the uh, girls side and all. So they do a girl session and, and uh, yeah. um, the uh, boy session. So it's just at the moment the target is between eight to twelve years old. Mm -hmm. So then sure. inshallah we'll develop on that. So beyond twelve? Beyond twelve we we'll, we'll look into that so at the moment it's something we we'll okay. around. We have done a few like football sessions, uh, multi sport sessions, uh, character building. So hopefully okay. you know at, at the moment the, the six month project what we'll be doing is concentrating on eight to twelve. Okay. Yeah, and then inshallah in between we've got um, other sessions going on. Uh, maybe with local massages, uh, youth programs that we can target to the older. Yeah, then the day we all need to, like, mashallah, what, the type of work you guys are doing, mashallah, working in all the different masjids, all the different organizations. At the end of the day, <coughs> we all want, like, some people, you know, they look at some, some program in a particular masjid or some program in a particular uh, organization, like it's one of their programs. But we all need to understand that. It's all our program, yes, and we all like it. In it okay. together, Definitely. at the end of the day, you know, okay. if it maybe it's not my child directly, but it's still a child of the Ummah. Okay. You know, it's, uh, every child out there is our child, is the Ummah, part of the Ummah of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. We need to have that wider mentality that, mashallah, you know, I'm not just doing it for my people or my masjid or my organization, I'm doing it for the whole Ummah. So if, if I can uh, emphasize on that, sometimes we get the, we, we hear within the locality, even within our friends or anyone, misconception of oh, that's my masjid or their masjid. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes even I've heard from the slightly older generation, yes. how did this program go in your masjid? Yeah. And I, I say yeah. to them, well, what do you mean your masjid, my masjid? Yeah. That program is for everybody. Sometimes. It's not, you know, individually um, targeted that, or oh, it's just going to be the local mm. neighborhood that's within yeah. the masjid. Uh, vicinity. So even like again, personal, my personal uh, look into it was how can we um, take them, not a burden in the sense, but how can we support the masjids and the madrasas in the sense of providing activities Actually. yeah, mm -hmm. and, and these social issues that what we have. Okay. So rather than, because we have the ustads and the, you know, the younger ulimas and everyone, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, they're busy with uh, the normal that they feel like yeah. teaching yeah. you know there's a sense of responsibility already even in the imam you know it's okay. such a big responsibility so how can we support them that and show that we can connect them with the local imams in a social gathering and all even sometimes out of mm -hmm. the masjid. No, definitely definitely everybody i think everybody needs to give as much time as they can to you know the community for our own generations to for our own children you know, today, unfortunately, something just on a side note that just came to my mind. That, you know, on a side note, people, you know, when they see things are going wrong, a lot of crime happening in the community, a lot of like, you know, evil happening, that people start saying, you know, oh, what are all the Muslims doing? Or what are uh, all the ulama doing? Or what are the Muslims doing? You know, we need to look at each other like, what am I doing? Yes. And, uh, okay, you know, it's easy to point fingers at anybody else. But what am I doing? Like, I remember, I don't know, maybe you were here as well that time. You know, uh, I think two, last year or the year before we made a group, just before summer holidays, uh, I don't know if you remember. So, that youth issues or something. Yeah. 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 So, so, just to mention a few points on it. So, um, uh, 
how that came along was just before the summer holidays. So summer holidays, mashallah, you know, we know it's like a long holiday, six, seven week kind of thing, you know, sometimes even longer in certain places. Huh? So just before the summer holidays, uh, there were some activities going on, like around some areas, some residential areas or something. And I saw certain comments on certain social media platforms and people were saying that, oh, if this is already starting from now, what is yet to happen in the next seven weeks or six weeks of holiday? What are these kids are going to get up to? What nonsense? You know, this is just the beginning. So they were all like very worried that we need something going on. So then I thought that, you know, this, let's plan something. So we made a group and about 80 people joined the group or maybe 80 plus. I don't know the exact number. Plus 80. But subhanAllah, when we said that, let's everybody come together. They were all local people, all from Pali. Then, uh, so when we call all of them together in the masjid, then let's actually sit down and just plan something for everything. Uh, I think you were there. There were I think eight people who were there. So from eighty on the group, only actually eight people turned up on, on, on the thing. So you know somebody said subhanallah that you know when the time comes to be actually start doing the work, you know. Like I put a status up yesterday on one of the uh, on my status or something, I put it up that we have now become a lot of observers. We are not doing action. I, I found yeah. this exactly the same thing. Yeah. You know, if 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 we put the numbers to it, um, we when we initially had that meeting, which we called in Bali Town, where Kick Temptation is at the moment, uh, thirty to forty people turned up. Okay. Plenty of concern. Uh, after that, we had a few meetings. We gradually went down. Initially, at the moment, if uh, if you count external um, support that we get from Umarati, Mayubali, yeah, uh, there's only five of us that are active, <laughs> um, including them. Yeah. And what I've noticed uh, and all that within the community is that, like you say, a lot of observers, a lot of uh, voice uh, thing, but there is no, no one hands on mm. or dedicated to going into it and tackling from A to Z. Allah, Allah guide all of us, inshallah. We all need to do more. Yeah. Whatever we are doing at the moment, like, sometimes we become very content. That, oh, I'm doing by the end of it. But we need, there's always room for more, there's always room for betterment. We always need to do, give it our best shot. And all, we all need to ask ourselves, that, am I doing everything I can yeah. to, for my community? Am I yeah. doing everything yeah. I can for our generations? Even if you look at it, all the masjids from when I've grown up, they, they're doing so much effort Actually. with the programs, you know, yeah. within yourself here, Alachi, we've got every, something going on every week. Uh, Henry Street, Medina Masjid, you know, even uh, our Healy Masjid, Masjid Taqwa, uh, everyone is doing something. Actually. Yeah. So there isn't that Masjid isn't doing, yeah. mm. but for a sense of community, um, I think the mm. community needs to have a big meeting, <coughs> get in, uh, you know, give the support to the local masjids or any other local community organizations that's out there. Uh, coming to the point, mashallah, one of the main highlights of uh, uh, your work, mashallah, which I really uh, admire is uh, the sessions that you have on Friday evenings and uh, yeah. the club here, advice yeah. sessions, mashallah, which is something which is like unique in our community, it's not something, mashallah. But, uh, we did have uh, like uh, about four or five years ago we did have some general counseling sessions here we, we do have it every now and then um, uh, but not as regular due to personally my time etc and everything that um, who was that time but in the beginning we were quite active with counseling and we did have a few people who uh, got came to us asking for job advice etc so we advised them whatever we could at that time and then we just directed them to there was an organization like your brother Nabi Masalada. So, Masalada, this is a, a unique type of work. So, if you can just give us a little bit of uh, how it's been going. and uh, this, this, obviously, um, Brother Nabi has been working in, in the field for quite a long time uh, through the local uh, organization, government organization. Yeah. You know, the oh, it's a government organization. Yeah, government organization. Yeah. He works. And then, obviously, I have my personal journey, friends that have been through it. Um, you know, seeing upon that, and then when you know, for my individual self or 
so many people in the family and they've gone looking out for help. Um, not that we don't have the help, you know, but spiritual side is there, uh, professional side is there. But we felt like that we need to have a, a combined professional mm -hmm. and a spiritual side by side. Sure. Yeah. So uh, looking into it now and, and, and in the future, we want to develop where we've got somewhere that's a dedicated okay. yeah, centre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and connecting with each masjid or even local organisations. Um, basically, so it's helping the parents to the people that are affected by it, people that are involved in it. And it's not something, depending on the person, what sort of drugs they're involved in, how deep they're into it. It's a big dedicated yeah. uh, attention that needs required in order for someone to come out of this. Right. No, uh, definitely, but definitely. spiritual side is very important it's not, it's not easy in it so I, I we feel like that we want the ulemas to be involved in this okay. to understand uh, this disease what we have in our community you know? no it's very very common to us like you can say because it's, it's, it's becoming within, within the uh, general society and even with everything um, they, they normalize it and it's, so yeah. especially with in this uh, social media platforms even like um, we were discussing the other day uh, where they, you know, normal weed stuff, yeah. yeah so what's happening with that? It's, still, it's, it's yeah. now marketed in a such a way that they, they say it's medical. Mm. So you know, and uh, the branding and everything, you know, how it's attracting uh, people, ruining people, like, ruining people. Yeah, yeah like it's a like, gateway. Yeah. If if it's taking you away from your uh, even like a normal day to day life, you know, mm. it could be work or family life or anything. But especially taking you away from your namaz, you know, not you know the connection between you and your creator. Like the one, when brother came to see me, uh, not long ago, I think a few months ago, I'm not sure exactly. And he was discussing with somebody in his family. Who's not very young, maybe she was saying maybe about 40, 50 years old. I don't know exactly. Uh, she said the uh, he did go through certain problems in his life, like. Family issues were a business and all that. A lot of the girls came, you know, the same business. So maybe he started taking some drugs just for a bit of peace of mind, maybe. And just to get his mind off things. <coughs> and then he got addicted to it, I think. Like, for the first 40 years or maybe 50 years, he never had drugs. And then he started taking drugs due to whoever. You, you, you see did. many different cases. Yeah. You might see someone, at a, especially now, uh, as young as uh, 9 to 12. Mm. Depending, and, you know, yeah. where, where they be, depending on drug or uh, drugs, how what sort of drugs are around them. Uh, say, uh, average age would say a twelve-year-old, fourteen-year-old mm -hmm. would be uh, a weed or you know, like especially vape now, which a lot of people don't think is nothing, but it, it does affect quite a lot. You get sure. the vapes that have got cannabis in them, like THC and all sorts. You know, something. So, uh, so even we've had cases with that where. We've had a 14 year old come in with other concerns affecting his uh, madrasa, his school. And, and when, when we discussed with the 14 year old, he felt like that. He had the symptoms exactly the same as what would be for a weed, anyone that's going mm -hmm. through it. Yeah, you sure. know, like hiding or uh, they have a certain area. Mm -hmm. and, and when he felt like that, it's no different yeah. to, to, to weed. <coughs> like, you know, the symptoms or the feelings, mm -hmm. they, they are very. So, so yeah. now I'm just thinking, so, so that brother um, was mentioning that his family is better for him, like due to whatever he's going through. He's about to lose his job. Basically, he's ruining everything. And uh, they don't know how to approach it, they don't know what to do. <coughs> so there's a lot of parents out there who may have similar issues in terms of the kids, or like you mentioned, uh, 12 year olds, and maybe even younger, a lot for them. <coughs> so, so like, even like with, uh, um, sometimes people might recognize it's about recognizing mm -hmm. that do I have a problem? Yeah, first is a <coughs> do I have a problem? Some they might never realize until you know uh, 15 years into it, 10 years into it, 8 years into it, you know, depending on the, the thing. Some will lose everything, yeah. And still not come out of it and mm. say, no, that's not the problem. The problem it's is a, so it's, it's addiction. It's addiction. Mm. How deep they into it was. And, and 
nowadays it's not just one item there might be multiple items you could be weed plus a drink alcohol you know and it's a multiple mixture so how, how do we you know tackle this issue because if if leaving one addiction you've still got another one third one or fourth yeah one. just left not any yeah. Yeah. so the, the the support is available and you can do it there, there is hope you know and obviously it's a willpower uh, the willpower and you make dua from that yeah. without like, asking yeah. him yeah. there is no way that you, you, you're going to get out of this no definitely first you know if a person has the willpower yeah. even if they ask and put their hands up and say Allah I want to get out of this Allah like, what is this Allah yeah. the, the, the help will come automatically. no definitely, definitely. You, know, you know like uh, I went to the rehab center in South Africa so uh, last night uh, I was there so we met him and then last time I was in South Africa, I actually said I really want to go and visit the whole setup. So that's all he showed us around. And there were about seven, eight, or I think I think like I think about eight or nine uh, people from the UK who were there. And you were saying that the youngest they've got is seven year old yeah. and the oldest they've got is like seventy plus, seventy or seventy five years old. So that everybody there. And he says, SubhanAllah, you know, he just, he said, they try to keep them off it for them two months or three months or whatever, you know, the time they are there in the rehab center. So they've got a very good setup, they've been set up for about 26 years, I think, now, mashallah. They've developed themselves, they've become very professional, mashallah. You can say in terms of uh, Islamic type of rehab center, that's one of the best. Well, what I strongly believe in is that having, the addiction is one thing, yeah. but coming out of addiction, is then the character building. Yeah, sure. When the character building comes in, we, we, we can't, we've got the best example of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So we, we, we are so lucky to have all this spiritual side, yeah? yeah. And, and the help, and you'll be made, made so easy. But it's, it's not just the whole lifestyle you mm. know, that could be involved with music, to, you know, your attire, to, having cars or there's nothing wrong in having yeah. certain things yeah. if you have the means in the right way, way. In the right way yeah. you know like but, but because of this sometimes you know they're, they're going beyond and they get into drug dealing and you know they might be stealing stuff from home yeah. or, you know so you're you're affecting so many people that you might everybody not be around realize, you, yeah. you know everybody who's living with you or everybody around you can, they can be yeah. very affected and you could be so clouded and and oblivious to it, mm. then you won't even realize that oh, I'm, I'm creating this within my own home or even within the society. Yeah, sometimes a person might think that, oh, I'm too much into it, there's no way, like you might lose hope. Oh, you know, yeah, there's a, there's a big fear in a lot of people. Yeah, that, oh, know, how am I going to get out of it? I'm already into I, it. And, you know. I, I, I know, you know, people are above the age of 40, 50, they are losing their jobs now, but they never blame the addiction of their heart. Mm. They'll always think that it's something else. Yeah. It's that person or it's something, you know? Yeah, so so the because moment like like you just mentioned, the moment we need to understand that there is a problem, number one, and uh, actually be ready to like get help. Like the moment the, the, the problem is that a lot of people just like in Russia with the carpet. It's like, oh you know, the family might know but they say, Oh, like you know I I, I feel like that, that parents need to be educated. Yeah. And, and especially if we educate the younger generation parents and then obviously there's the elders and all that you know there might be a parent that's in those 50s but like uh, <coughs> I think in Leicester they've got some support groups yeah. just been spinning hill that we've been yeah. working with right. Alhamdulillah uh, Brother Abzal uh, has been doing that for about 5-6 years right. they refer a lot of people to uh, South Africa, they are looking at setting up an Islamic uh, rehab in the UK. Uh, but it's a, a long project. Yeah. It's not something that can be done overnight. No, no, yeah, and and without the local community or wider community, Muslim community especially supporting mm -hmm. something like this, because we are going to lose generations. No, yeah, that's it. I, 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 personally, I personally was in Brazil about, um, no, sorry, it was Cuba. I was in Cuba uh, about six, seven years ago, okay. and um, 
we went to the local masjid in, in Havana and there was a brother there uh, that were from Libya. So they're refugees. So he took us to where he lives. And uh, you know, there were some new Muslims and some other refugees and then and then we went to see a, a, a brother, uh, a family. So the only identity they knew that was, oh, my grandfathers were from Palestine. Yeah. Subhanallah. So they've lost everything to be said. Right? That's, that's all they know. Yeah. yeah and that, <coughs> the same situation is the whole of uh, South America over here. Argentina, Brazil. Yeah, even yeah, Brazil, everywhere. Lebanese people yeah. or you know, Middle Eastern people. Like some of them, uh, we yeah. hear that even the children of Sahaba, from yeah. the generation of Sahaba. Yeah. Like, like, uh, so even so, even here now, it feels yeah. like you know, if, if if something is not, if you don't take the serious, yeah. serious, you know, and addiction is not just drugs that can be, you know, pornography, yeah. even your phone nowadays, mm. you know, screen addiction, screen addiction. Mm. It's one of the, you know, it's so even I, I'm involved in it. Even, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if I should say I was evaluating it that day, and I read something and it said if you get up, try and avoid using it for the first hour. And when you go to sleep the last hour, trying to avoid using it. But it's, it was so engrossed in it, yeah. so so thin in it, that that is something that we need to look at. That if we're like this at the moment, how is going to happen to him? the next generation? Because literally everyone at home is just passing me on and say, you know, if the kids crying here, here, take this phone yeah. or take this or okay. you know, it's become a toy. And yes, they're growing up in that, mind so it's yeah. the same mind. So. So, like for parents who's, uh, who's found out that the child might be in drugs, or um, what do you think are the first steps? It's, so, it's, it's, one, what uh, even with anything, even personally, when we're involved in this, or anyone that wants to be involved helping somebody, so it can be a parent or anybody, uh, you've got to understand that I personally would look at how would our Prophet with sure. empathy, empathy, try and understand. Yeah. You know, well, like that's a, their, point of view. their point of view, where are they in that situation, why are they in that situation. They might not want to open up, but Alhamdulillah what we've noticed with the younger generation that's been maybe 25 and under, yeah, uh, they have British born parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so like we, we, if I said my parents have came from back home from India, or if my parents come from Pakistan, they might have not much understanding that how come my son or not recognised or not have that. And yeah, because of South Asian yeah. community, oh, you, what you're doing wrong, you literally there, or, you know, yeah. let go of this, you, why should you be doing this? They don't understand the, how deep they're into it, how hard it is, or how they're going to get out of it. So it's, it's, it's understanding. And obviously, uh, you make dua to Allah that, you know, you, you know, try and get the guidance, but it's understanding your child and why is he there. It's never too late. Mm. It's never too late for them to come out of it. But it, the support is needed, mm. and the support is needed through every step. Sometimes that we've realized the parents are attempting to get into work, but the guy just come out of something. True. He needs to understand. He needs to build up his health. You know, the mm. mental state could be all over the place. Yeah. You know, they go through <coughs> so much. Mm. We need to look at all the different aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I say, the more years you put it in. It might take you that many years to take you out. Mm. Well, yeah. Well said, yeah. But with the help of Allah and the duas and the, the support, you might be out within not like even sometimes, half the time. You might be a quarter of the time. No, sometimes we look for instant results. Yeah, this is when we think that within one session or within like a week or two, everything the guy should be out of it. Like, oh, he's been going there. But like, it doesn't work so fast. Like, you know, it takes time. Sometimes you know, it takes. So it depending on where they are, the, yeah. I think. For someone to come out of drugs, the family has to be involved. Mm. So, with, Understanding with the wife, mm. with the parent, yeah, or uncle, that gives you that support. Okay. Uh, there's someone out there to listen to you. Because most of the time, you just saw what sometimes they might just want to pour their heart out. Mm. No, definitely. You sometimes you someone just want to listen. Yeah. So, you, rather than you, you, us doing the talking, you just listen to them and you might just need to have. A couple of comfortable words, no, or yeah. some, uh, guidance, or, or something of sense sure. of understanding, sure. and and you can do wonders for them. Subhanallah. Like I remember, this goes back uh, uh, and, uh, 
about ten twelve years ago when I was in America. We were we went to we went to one mosque in America in Los Angeles, and it, uh, one brother he came to me <coughs> and he showed me that uh, my family like they not believe in Muslim or met and we went to a river a lot of. They said I'm the only one who fast in my family in Ramadan. Then I have my cereal at home and then I quickly on my way to the masjid just before Shahir time ends, I quickly go to the petrol station and get a cup of coffee and have my Shahir. So, so the guy at the petrol station, I think he's a Muslim. Yes. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, I think he's a Muslim. He said, once or twice I tried to talk to him, but, but I think once he did do salam to me or something, so maybe can we go and talk to him? I said, yeah, yeah, let's go. So we went, I, I sat in the car, I told him that first we go and ask that, is it appropriate time to go? Mm-hmm. Okay, no. It was nice. After the Rabbi uh, then he went to ask, and the brother was uh, inside the supermarket and just uh, and, uh, inside the shop, uh, I just think that maybe he was just packing and then leaving there. <coughs> so he said, Yeah, yeah, come. So we went, we were like, Okay, we went, and we just, first we asked him what's your name, so he gave us some English name, gave us something, and then uh, uh, we told him where he's from. Okay. Gave him Portugal or Spain or some random country name. We could tell that he was from there. Then, uh, then we just told him everything's okay. Then he just started talking and just pouring his heart out. Like you can say for the next half an hour, we didn't say anything. We just acknowledged, yeah, you know, what happened. And yesterday I just was telling us about his family, his children, his where they come from, where they come from. You know. And then, uh, then at the end I asked him again, what's your name? So they gave him a Muslim name, the Dawood or something. Like that. And I tell you, very from the So I said, so, so he said, so I said, how do you feel? So he said, you're the only guys who have actually come and listened to me. Exactly. He said, so until now, until now, until now, whoever have come, they just came and talked to me, preached me. So you, you are the first guy watching me and have been listening to me so patiently and so like attentively for the last half an hour plus. So I actually feel like so confident, like I've actually torn my heart out. You know, you're the normal guy, you know. So I said, so one, you know, sometimes you just yeah. don't know. So, it just, you, you just remind me of something that I used to think over the last few years. Uh, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong to think that or anything. But, uh, especially the, the, the prophets, uh, you know, and the Sahabas, they went through physical uh, struggle. Did you? True. Yeah? Physical, physical, physical struggle. Huh? Test and trials. Test and trials, maybe. <laughs> Especially the Rasulullah's uh, Ummah uh, from now on, it feels like this generation here. Yeah. It's all emotional. Yeah, it's all emotional. So it's all mental, emotional. mental and emotional and everything. Yeah, true. So, you know, like I, I, I think sometimes you know the best of counselor is the Creator. You can't get Allah, 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 and building the connection. Like I say, our, our, yeah. our belief is, our iman is that all problems are from Allah yeah. and the solution to all problems also from Allah. Absolutely. Absolutely. One last question, Shana. I think, uh, uh, I think we should uh, call it this. I could go on, oh. but yeah, I'm getting used to this. <laughs> but it's just, I don't know how it's going to look. Obviously, this is the first time for me. But yeah, inshallah, like, you know, something, you know. So, yeah. if, uh, if a parent, mashallah, how, as a parent or as the teacher or, or staff, how would, what would you do to protect, you know, the children or the students, etc. from going into drugs? So like, <laughs> because the environment out there is like quite, so they don't want to be like too harsh on them as well, like not to go out, like some parents, so like what advice would you give them? Look, like, um, if I look back at it, when we were growing up, we went on with the place, yeah? yeah, but now it's all on your social media, it's all, it's it's all in the music. Yeah. So many things. So obviously, um, if you try and uh, upbring your children within the Islamic mahal, you, there's there's only so much you can you know sure. uh, think. So uh, then obviously, uh, you know, keeping tabs on who your uh, children are keeping company with, mm. then or yeah, friends yeah. and everything. Then check it. Yeah, right. And what sort of environment are you creating within your home? You know, that will influence. And then, obviously, uh, now, even uh, in high school, uh, the friends they make, when they go out into college, that is a very key time 
to make sure what sort of trends they have been evolving mm -hmm. and, and then going into universities but like you said earlier on you know that someone might get in, trips involved in uh, after 40 years mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. we don't know so the, the best way is, is to keep that up with the uh, uh, masjids yeah. and the, the local yeah. community work mm -hmm. you know yeah. and, and, and there's plenty goodness out there we didn't just uh, you know go into drugs or finding any, yeah. any, any anything. No, there's so many so many ways of getting and, the mind off things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even like you know myself, I'm a parent, but I, I need to you know uh, implement is try and connect with the children. Mm. You know, be on their level. Yeah, give them time. Give them time. You know, be there for them. Be there for them. Not be like you know totally strict on them or something because. That might even deter them. Be like a friend to them. Yeah, be, be like a friend. Let them open up, and, and, and especially in this day and age, that we need them. Because kids now, they're, they're exposed to a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and, and they have a lot more understanding than what we would have had when we were growing up. No, so definitely, definitely. So, in terms of understanding, they have a lot more understanding. In terms of maturity, life skills, they still. They still need yeah. that. They still, so that. They, need still yeah. they still need that guidance. Yeah, so we still like even we were growing up, yeah. all, all, we were thinking, oh, does my dad know? He doesn't know what that is. All this is. They knew everything, that's why they stayed away from him. Yeah, true. You know? So, um, uh, Alhamdulillah, no matter what the Brother Ibrahim for being with us today, inshallah, and uh, hope uh, you are benefiting. And any person have any issues with drugs or parents need any advice or, you know, anybody. Know anybody who has drug issues, but you don't know what to do. Uh, mashallah, moving ahead, being Brother Ibrahim, and Mashallah, they do, Mashallah, they do good work around these issues. And uh, they have done a lot of good programs around addiction as well, and uh, understanding addiction, etc. So, Mashallah, you know, may Allah reward you for the good work that you have been doing. You know, if you need any help or support from us, Mashallah, you know, the duas, as you know, as always, <laughs> and even, yeah. you know, like I come here for Juma. And you're always asking how to update and everything. And that feels like, you know, your duas are there. So as I'm even inviting here now and giving us this platform and hoping that we can develop on this. Like, uh, and, and discuss, Sabit, you know. I'll be telling Brother yeah. uh, Sabit as well. Um, uh, that, <coughs> you know, we need to, like just today, just uh, about five o'clock or something, there were two young lads that were just sitting there. Mm. And, uh, then they started talking and they said there's this must be like close or something so i said we try not to uh, close it it's the uh, we try to keep it open as much as we can they said oh that's really good then they started mentioning one of their masjids they said oh the masjid which is local to me they mentioned a particular masjid you know i can't even mention and they said we live near there they said we our local masjid only opens 10 minutes before namaz and only close us straight after 10 minutes after namaz and we can't sit there on that so if we can come here and sit around, I said, yeah, yeah come down. And then they said, um, uh, what other activities do you do? So I showed them about this podcast. I said, oh, this is, I said, oh that's the way forward, that's the way forward. He said, if you have any questions, we'll let you know, or we'll let our friends know about this podcast. I, I feel that, that we should uh, let these um, kids come here, yeah. express themselves. Yeah, they, they are about 20, 20, to 20 or 22 That way, they, you know, they, they have that any concerns, they be able to come and bring. And it's, it's building the connection yeah. of. No, that's so what they, they might say that, oh, the Mona Kebab is you know, he's easy to talk to. So I can ask him any question. Because yeah. yeah. sometimes when we were growing up, when we used to see the mom, oh, you know, they used to shake, you know, we can't even do proper salam. Yeah. Now, yeah, but now, uh, Alhamdulillah, so we have so many ulemas, youngsters here, you know, you go to every masjid, you know, there's three, two, three imams there, Mashallah. yeah, and, and, Mashallah. and there's so many, they're willing to, you know, yeah. they might see, everybody's there for you, Mashallah. everybody's there, yeah. you know, every masjid, you no, nobody should feel that, there's nobody, everybody is there for you, everybody is ready to listen to you, and if they have time for you, they can make time for you, inshallah, they are ready to give you the best advice, and, uh, so don't hold back, you need or anybody you know needs any type of advice in anything not only drugs it could be any other advice inshallah we are here inshallah and uh, hope you will benefit and uh, you know it's all confidential uh, you know nobody will find out and it's just you know we are not here to name or shame or expose anybody in any way everything uncompromised as much you know amana confidentiality everything we try to keep it 
Finalmente que le hemos confidenciado el tuyo, es verdad. Ya no, no. Pero, pero aquí el imán es de la absida, 100% confidencial. Sí, 100%. Yeah, you know? And uh, they never, you know, discuss, especially with yeah. Nemo or anything. Yeah, true. You know? Yeah. And the best is to do is that if, if, you, if you're finding, you know, that you're getting into something or uh, you, you're into it deeply, take that step and that it's not going to happen overnight. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Sure. And at the same time, you know, you make dua to Allah to that, 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 you know, guides you to come out. Yeah. Sure. Even if it's lying in your bed after you've been out or something, mm. it's that one moment, you know? Yeah, we don't know. Any moment could be the moment of acceptance. Yeah. Anything could change. Anything could yeah. change. Mm. So, don't, don't ever, but you do have to take that step. You know, like and that one step will make the difference. Not straight away, you might make straight away, not in our hands. Yeah, sure. yeah. But you have to take that and accepting that you may have something and Society within our community, they might say, "Oh, this you're a goner," or like they say. Yeah. But you never are. Yeah. No, you can never give up. Like you know, you know? we always give the example of Omar Adilan. From where to where? He's not from going yeah. out to kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To now, Allah changed him in such a way that now he's, you know, lying next to the Prophet of Allah in the Garden of Jannah. They say that. You know, from where to where? You could never imagine. So like every. Sina has a future, the same, like every Sina, you know, there's something good for him. And, and, and like people who are in the Sina or involved in drugs and then, you know, they have so much compassion. Yeah. But it's just a matter of letting go of this just, one individual item, product, or whatever you think. Yeah. If just you like let go of it, you, there's a lot of better life out there. So you see the world a lot better. Yeah. Like, what Allah has created and, and given us. You know? Allah, give, Allah gives us the best in this world and what best in the other Like I, I used to look at it back in the day. Yeah. You know, just an example that like, even if I want to have a milkshake, 24 hours Tesco's, you know, pop in and grab it. You know, yeah. places like Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, you know, they don't have the muscle sure. to eat, you know, they don't yeah. know whether it's going to come, how it's going to come. So, Alhamdulillah, I think we've uh, taken quite a bit of time, so shall we leave it till left? Alhamdulillah, it's, it's been a great experience. And, uh, and uh, this is my first time on podcast, so I'd like to see the results. And then, you know, inshallah, we can. Yeah, so if you have any questions, any suggestions, leave a comment, inshallah. And uh, we would like to see Brother Ibrahim again in our podcast in the future. And if any of you would like to join our podcast as well, most welcome. If you have any questions, you have any queries, inshallah, don't hold back. May Allah reward you, may Allah bless you. Jazakumullah khairan. Until again, we meet. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.